Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Hope you're having a great day. And today I want to show you a bit of a sketching process. This isn't going to be so much on how to draw a this or a that, and more about the process in which you can draw almost anything. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to draw some kind of uh, character's face, since that's typically what I focus on is character creation and, you know, stuff like that comic book stuff and all that fun jazz so what I want to explain here is the process in which you start very rough and you build up onto your character and you know this is more of a, a beginner's guide I've had some requests to do more beginner stuff you know because I'll get into doing something and I don't really think much in terms of if it's advanced beginning uh, mediocre whatever I just kind of do what I do so I've had a few people say, you know, man, can you do some more beginner stage kind of stuff? So that's what this is. This is a, you know, easy to follow beginner stage. So let me explain this. So what I'm doing is I rough out a basic face shape, obviously head, shoulders, you know, pretty, pretty basic. Just this egg kind of top with a wedge shape at the bottom. You know, if you want to simplify it, you can do the circular oval here. The wedge you know box here and then the wedge there I just kind of combine them all real quick because I'm so used to drawing this uh, always do your center line like this halfway mark like that and then so on and so forth half from you know from this mark to the chin goes approximately the nose halfway from the nose to the chin goes the mouth etc uh, distance of the eyes are always equal to one eye. Now, I don't want to get too far into this. You can find other videos uh, on my channel and elsewhere that explain the spacing and proportions of the face. So that's all I'm going to cover there. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to sketch in some lines what I'm kind of picturing this character to be. I'm kind of picturing this, I don't know, elven, you know, dark elf kind of thing or whatever with uh, maybe like this little headpiece deal. A little, give him a little jewel in the forehead there. All right, so what this is is just a basic, you know, character layout. Nothing too extravagant because I want to keep this somewhat brief and quick for you guys. And so now here's the process. Now you see I've just kind of roughed out, you know, real basic features and stuff like that of what I'm trying to convey with this character. Now what I recommend here, especially digital, but you can use this for digital or traditional, basically just a feeling out process to get the, you know, the placement of objects, the scale, you know, the features, and this applies to whatever you're drawing. It could be a car, building, whatever. Um, again, I like doing characters, so this is what I immediately go to. All right, so there's my really rough, you know, st stage sketch or whatever. Now. The other thing is this, if you find yourself, this might be a little bit more in tune with, you know, what I've done and what I'm used to drawing, so where I only give myself certain reference lines. If you need to, in this stage, you can also give yourself a lot more reference lines. Like, for instance, if I want some of the detail under the eyes, more definition to the cheekbone and the way the lines go around the mouth, obviously study your anatomy to know where all this stuff goes, and, you know... There's no reason you can't put in tons of sketch lines because uh, I'm going to lighten these up to do the next level of drawing. So the more information I can give to myself, the better. So let's just sketch all that in there. Let's do like a little bit into the outfit or whatever. You know, something like that. Okay, so there's there's my really rough rendition. I haven't really got into shadows or nothing yet. I, I could place some of that in there too. I generally don't. I usually keep this mainly just line art at this stage. So what I'll do is duplicate this layer. Scale it down. Kind of show you the stages of how this works out. Okay, so now I'll grab my soft brush here, and I'll show you the settings to that. There's the settings inside Sketchbook Pro for my soft brush, the, or what I, you know, stay at. Basically a 50%, uh, you know, airbrush, 50% opacity. So now I just lightly erase this down. 
Now, what I generally do is erase it almost to the point where you can't see it. And then I redraw the next stage of lines over top. And you can literally do this two, three times, whatever gets you to the level of finish that you're looking to get. But this works out really well. You can do this in a more uh, sketched fashion and not be so, um, let me zoom in just a little bit here, and not be so defined as far as the type of uh, character shape you're going for. I could have kept this a lot more loose and, you know, did a more, um, kind of a figuring out process or a developmental type look. Uh, in this case, I went with, you know, I already knew kind of what I was going to draw. I had a somewhat image in my head, so I quickly roughed out the shapes that I was going to go with. But you could get a lot more sketchy, scribbly, whatever, and kind of, you know, just play around and, and come up with things. Do more conceptual type, you know, effects. So now I can go in with a little bit more confidence you know about where I'm gonna put some lines you know try to get a little bit cleaner uh, look to my shapes but by no means does this you know have to be you know an exact science at this stage I can still play around with this I can still have fun with it change things and it's not gonna it's not gonna kill the process you know that's that's the beauty of the sketch is that you're you know figuring out you know what works and what doesn't and always be open to change even at this you know stage definitely at this stage and definitely at the stage you know previous to this one uh, that's how you come up with you know your greatest ideas is uh, trying new things and not looking at it like oh I've always drawn eyes this way this is the way my eyes have to be uh, that's a really easy way to get yourself to stagnate as an artist and uh, not, you know, not grow because you, you start thinking that, you know, uh, you get you get into a rut, you know, pattern. We're all creatures of habit. So if you find yourself uh, lending too much to a habit in your style, you know, try something different. You know, break out of that, uh, that barrier, that box or whatever, and uh, that's how you're going to always see your art grow. You know, study other artists and see how they look at the same thing. And, you know, really study it. You know, when you're looking at things like, you know, the way they draw their ears or whatever it is, really look at the way they're constructing those lines and where those lines start, where they put their heavier uh, line weight and things, and you'll start kind of, you know, it's like a blueprint to their work, and you'll start figuring that out. And that's the other thing in this stage of drawing, you can, you know, play with the line weights, uh, play with the shadows a little bit more. You know, um, it's always good to draw in your shadows versus sketching them. Uh, you know, kind of try either or, but I've, uh, I've heard that from other uh, professional artists that you know, say it's actually better to draw in the shadows. And notice I'm trying to throw in a lot of little line breaks. So I do a little bit of line weight, a couple little separation lines. I, I, I avoid going like this, line, 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 line. You know, it makes your artwork, art, uh, excuse me, artwork look very flat. So the whole point is to do a lot of little line variations, break up the lines, thicken the lines in some areas, and all that gives your drawing a little bit more feel, a little more interest. Zoom back a little bit. Now at this stage too, like I said about the shadows, I can start kind of figuring out some light sources. You know, I've got the shadow under the nose here. Uh, if I'm trying to make this character look a little more ominous, I'll always shadow uh, under the eyes here. I'll do something like that. Maybe under this, this eye also. I always try to change uh, a little bit 
from side to side so that I can define a light source. So maybe there's a little bit of light coming on, the, you know, just a little bit under the eye there. So it's, you, know, you want to get in the habit of not just totally mirroring everything from side to side, you know, because that's not the way shadows work and, you know, life works. So there's got to be a little bit of difference on each side. A little bit under the lip here. Chin. But I guess I won't get too much into shadows since this is, again, more of an intermediate and basic kind of approach to figuring out the drawing process. So I'll stick with that. You can see I'm, you know, sketching in a little bit more detail than the previous stage had. Not much, but just enough to give myself a little bit of progression. to the character here. And it's always good to put a nice heavier shadow under the top eyelid. And the eyebrows are, <coughs> excuse me, obviously very thin here, so I'll thicken those up. As far as a shadowing here, I would almost picture there would be some kind of, you know, darker shadow here. You know, you could do some most fancy little lines everybody likes to do. A little rounded shadow on the, the jewel on the head, whatever. And then another shadow across here, just to get like some of the roundedness of the head. You know, really make it look like that shape has some glare, or some um, you know light bouncing off it or whatever. You know, you can just play with that. And again, that's where the sketch you know lends itself to things like that. Again, I don't want to talk too much about shadows, but uh, the sketch process, you know is obviously going to affect everything you do in there. So like right there, I'm not entirely satisfied with that look. I just grab my soft brush, erase it down. You know, it's I still have a hint of the line work underneath, so I can work from that. I didn't mind the shape so much. It's not perfect, but it's not horrible. I won't uh, kick it out of bed yet, so I'll just go ahead and redraw that. And then the other portion, I might even add something like that. I'm sure I've seen this somewhere else, but hey, it's comics, man. You're, good luck being original. There's so much stuff out there. Um, okay, so now with those sketch lines in place, I can try it again and you know maybe rethink it a bit. Um, I don't think I mind this part. I think I could make that work by the time I got to the inking stage. Uh, maybe just bring the line straight down. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I don't know. And then this top part, let's try to just go more straight across. See if that looks any better. from 
them over here. I was thinking to have a darker start point right here. Then when I feather these lines down like this, it might look better. And essentially, the, you know, all I'm trying to explain here is that's where the sketch is, you know, is very powerful. It's it's to figure out things like this that, you know, you may not exactly go in and say, okay, I've got this clear cut idea, you know, of how all this stuff's going to look. You know, you're kind of working through the process. So that's where things like, you know, lightening your sketch lines and drawing over top, you know, and then obviously doing things like this where you zoom in and out, look at it from a distance, you know, and see if it's really working. I think it's getting closer. I don't think it's great yet. But I think I can make it work, especially by the time I, I ink it. All right, so let's see what else. Uh, Detail-wise, I always like to put the shadow under the neck here, or under the jawline, I should say. Okay, so yeah, so that's the process in which I would, you know, recommend you try, you know, just keep softening the lines, erase them down. You can also do that in a traditional method. Uh, it's actually where it comes from, obviously, is a traditional style of uh, drawing comics, and you use a kneaded eraser and soften the lines down and then rebuild them back up. And you can just continue to do this until you get a finished piece of artwork. But you can see from right there... You know, I can obviously still keep fine, uh, refining this artwork quite a bit. Uh, but I don't want this this uh, video to be too awfully long. Um, I've noticed that a lot of these ones that get watched more tend to be shorter. So uh, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Uh, I try to upload at least once a week, so I'll continue to do that. And I thank you very much for watching. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. So keep drawing. Keep having fun. And there we go.